through the research. Yes, sir. Yes. Mighty God. Amen. 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 Thank God for the psalmist today that have blessed us. Amen. With the word of God and songs. Thank God for all of you that are joining us, not only those that are here in the worship center, but those of you that are joining us in Zoom as well as on Facebook Live. We welcome you and greet you again this last day in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're so honored and privileged and thankful that you are joining us in worship, praise, and celebration either through our live broadcast or through the rebroadcast of our services. And we just praise God for each of you today. Uh, not only those who are part of the Rockland Church's members, but those that partner with us in ministry and join and share with us not only as disciples, but as stewards uh, and as uh, mission workers in uh, the uh, work of our Lord each and every day. We yeah. thank God for you and we praise God uh, that we are able to come together again this Lord's day. Amen. Thank Lord, for another day of yeah. worship, yeah. Yeah. praise, yeah. And celebration, amen. Yeah. Despite everything that's going on in our world, God is faithful, mm -hmm. God is <clears throat> merciful and kind to us that He blesses us to come together, and, amen. As we continue to get vaccinated, uh, that God will bless us that we can uh, come together and open up uh, our worship center again, and we can fellowship together in His presence, amen. Amen. We just thank God. Thank God for some faces we ain't seen in the place of a minute. Amen. 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 I want to ask that you would join me again in the 20th chapter of John's Gospel account. John chapter 20. Uh, this morning we're going to look at verses 24 through 29. Uh, if you were following us on last week and worshiping with us, we were out of the same said chapter, and the Lord has kept me there. And I thank God for uh, the Holy Spirit guiding and empowering. And Blessing me to be able to uh, not only sense and see what the Spirit is doing, but to be submissive to what the Spirit is saying. All right. And all I can need to say to you, His people. <clears throat> John chapter 20, this morning, verses 24 through 29. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. I pray that whether you have that book form of technology, that you would read silently with me, that you would keep your Bibles open. That we might share the word of the Lord together. Beginning in verse 24, the word of the Lord reads as thus Now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he is so he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger to the print of the nails, put my hand to his side, I will not believe. Right. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered, said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Mm -hmm. Right, we see this now in the presence of the Lord. Just give me a moment of meditation. Father, I Again, thank you for this day and for this precious privilege of worship, praise, and celebration. Thank you for allowing me to come to your house to be one of your people, and to eat, even to join those that are joining us across the world by means of our technology. We, O oh God, are in your sanctuary today, and we 
wherever we are. And we're about to hear from heaven. Prayer to ask as always that you would forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of my unrighteousness. Give me, O God, if you will, the clarity of speech and thought and understanding. As I stand again behind this, your sacred desk, for the moments that I was to share, for me to stand and for you to speak, that you would again this Lord's day hide me behind the cross, speak to me through it, allow your word to go forth, that it might not only meet each of us at our point of need, but it might cause those who are unsaved to confess hope and faith in you as the Lord saved and redeem of their lives. Bless those of us who are already, O oh God, a part of the household of faith, that our faith would be strengthened and fortified. Each of us, O oh God, today, and as we hear your word, we, O oh God, might embrace it, allow it, O oh God, to equip us, allow your word, O oh God, that it would, O oh God, make our lives better and sweeter in the earth and land until we get to the eternal land. God, I praise you and I bless you. I ask now that you would, as you've done in days past, magnify your presence, glorify your power, edify us, your people. As you've done in days past, I pray that you would do again for your servant, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, and Lord, my strength, my redeemer. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 From these few words that I we in the hearing this morning, the Lord's will. I want to try to preach and share with you from the thought of the struggle from within. The struggle from within. I'm a firm believer that self examination and self evaluation is both needful and necessary for every one of us. Right. It is ever important for us as human beings and as fellow believers, as children of God, to always, my brothers and my sisters, in our efforts to see not only the best in ourselves and the best in others, but even before we look at others, we need to look inwardly at ourselves. Yes, sir. Yes. It's always important for us to not only, my brothers and my sisters, look outward at life and the things thereof, but it is needful for every one of us to pause and to look inward, to look at those things in our lives that can be harmful, and those things in our lives that need work and need attention, that can be hurtful to others. Amen. So important for us, my brothers and my sisters, to understand that looking not only at the lives of others, the part of who we are, every now and then we need to look yes, inward at our own life, yes, yes. to look at who we are and where God would have us to be. Yes. And although looking inward, my brothers and my sisters, is beneficial and it's something that every one of us needs to do in order for us to not only bless ourselves and not be a burden to others, but looking inward, and then my brothers and my sisters, causes us to look at how we ourselves can become better, and how we can make others around us better. All right. We're living in a time, we're living in a season when so many things and so many people in our world, even those of us who are believers, are trying to navigate through all the negativity that is going on in our world. Yes, we are. And while we're trying to navigate and journey and go from day to day from one thing, one situation, one experience to another, the reality is that every one of us, whether we know it or not, we get caught up not only in what we hear and what we see and how we feel, but the reality is that it will cause us to struggle from within. All right. For this past year, we have been trying to navigate the journey through this pandemic. It's caused so many people, even Christians, to struggle in their faith. It's difficult because I've had preachers and I myself have had to wrestle and grapple with the fact that this issue of social distancing, even in our worship celebrations, it's caused our lives not only to be isolated from 
gatherings that would be normal for us in worship and praise and celebration. But it's also caused us to be able to have to be forced, if you will, to isolate ourselves from family and friends and other fellowships that once were a part of our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Believe us, my brothers and my sisters, because we are saved, we're sanctified, and perhaps as we often say, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. It does not remove the fact that we still struggle from within. Many of us are wrestling with personal struggles of life's daily needs of food, shelter, and clothing, and, and employment. Many are trying to wrestle with the fact that trying to aid their children with virtual learning. And so many parents have shared with me the struggles that they are having trying to balance work life and home life and, and family life. And so many young people are struggling trying to stay not only even in their studies, but at least be able to be on a level playing field that they won't feel like they're being left behind. Struggles of life, my brothers and my sisters, that, that every one of us face on a personal level from day to day are real struggles that we all need to look inwardly at and try to identify if we are sources that can aid and assist us in going forward. Right. We're facing societal struggles, there's repeated reports of pro police brutality and murders going on across our nation. That it appears by all indication that people of color, especially young black men, their lives are not valued as other lives are valued. And so often as we listen to news reports about things that are going on in our world and our nation, it would appear by all indication that, that we have the breaking point that we're struggling within to, to even speak up and speak out about the injustices that are going on. We have people that are wrestling with mental health issues and the related issues that are going on with the mass shootings that we're witnessing across the world. And, and even in Tennessee, because they passed the legislation about uh, the free carrying bill that everybody now can just have a gun. You can have a gun. You can carry a gun. You can carry a gun. I'm not worried about so much about those carrying. I'm worried about those who use them. And, not understanding that bullets have no eyes. And just as we witnessed here in Nashville this week, a young child who was minding her own business, who was with her mother or her grandmother, and the car was shot and killed because those who had guns were using them. Yeah. There is, my brothers and my sisters, national struggles that we are not dealing with some of the issues that are playing in our nation that on one side of the political aisle, there are those who feel like the voting laws have infringed their rights, and while others feel that they are infringing minority rights, that it would appear by all indication, my brothers and my sisters, that there was a struggle in our nation, that many are struggling with the fact that, that the voting laws are not as they ought to be, and if we are not careful, they're trying to turn back, I believe, the hands of time. So there are national struggles, the, the insensitivity, if you will, of black and brown people to treat them with humane respect and dignity. And even among those who are believers, these evangelicals who, who are seeing things and saying nothing, talk back to me in this place about the hatred, the racism, and the bigotry that is going on, and, and how we can come to our houses of worship and talk about that, that our amendments of religion are being abused but yet won't declare the word of God that God has declared and God has sanctioned that all of us are created in his likeness and in his image and, and that God has no respect of person and that love our brothers and my sisters is what God calls us who will confess the hope and faith and believe in and perhaps my brothers and my sisters we who are believers that, that rather than getting on Facebook learning and listening about the latest fad of passion, need to be sharing and spreading the good news of, of Jesus Christ. All I'm saying is that there is within me, I, I don't know about you, but there is within me a struggle from within that, that life that I see, life that I hear about, life that I'm witnessing is not what God's word says it ought to be. In the words of my 
hot my body, if change is going to come in the world, it must begin in me. Yeah. Martin Luther King once said that, that any time an injustice affects one, it affects all. I believe, my brothers and my sisters, that we are the crossroads of life, that, that we all need to rise up and examine ourselves in order to examine others. Right. Well, that be the case then, preacher. There are all these personal struggles, if there are these societal struggles, if there are these social struggles, if there are these national struggles, if there are these religious struggles, then perhaps there's something that the Word of God can offer us today about how we can deal with the struggles therein. This narrative, this text, my brothers and my sisters, highlights, if you will, a continuation Jesus' resurrection, and it is a post-resurrection narrative. This narrative out of John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29, is a narrative like that of the one we opened on last week in uh, verses 19 through 23. Jesus has resurrected from the dead, and Jesus has revealed himself to his disciples uh, and as we come to this narrative at verse 24 of John's Gospel account, we recognize and realize that although Jesus had 11 disciples who had remained with him, that 10 were there when Jesus showed himself earlier that evening. Thomas, who was one of his disciples who had been with him, was absent, and the disciples let him know that Jesus is not dead, but he is alive. This narrative, my brothers and my sisters, opens at verse 24, and it says that Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see his hands and the print of the nails and put my finger into his hand, into his nails, into his side, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Thomas, my brothers and my sisters, is struggling from within. Thomas, my brothers and my sisters, is struggling just as the other apostles or disciples had struggled prior to Jesus' crucifixion. You back up and you recall we're reading, you remember that when Jesus was arrested and Jesus was being tried by the religious zealous who were trying to remove him from society, that it was one Simon Peter who denied him three times. Peter, like the other disciples, when Jesus was being tried and false accusers were testifying against him, none of the disciples had spoken up and testified and gave evidence about being with Jesus. And let me pause here parenthetically because many of us at times, even though we're saved, sanctified, and saved, we're filled with the Holy Spirit at the right moment, at the right opportunity, or better still at the wrong moment, the wrong opportunity, we will, my brothers and my sisters, have, if you will, a struggle from within to say we're on the Lord's side. And these disciples like that of Thomas, even though they had saw the risen Savior, Thomas openly, after the disciples had reported to him that Christ had been risen from the grave, Thomas rejected their testimony and his response to them was that unless I see the nail print for myself, unless I see his hands, unless I, my brothers and my sisters, uh, can put my hand into his side, I won't believe. Thomas has a struggle from within. Truth be told, every one of us, if I had time this morning to Amen. Just to interview you. You got some struggles yourselves from within. While your struggles may not be my struggles, the truth be told, every one of us got some struggles from within. Thomas, the disciple of Jesus, Thomas, a follower of 
Jesus. Thomas, one who had witnessed the healings of Jesus. Thomas, one who had heard the sermons and teachings of Jesus. Thomas, one who sat at the table with Jesus in the upper room when Jesus told him to take and eat this, my, this bread that represents my body that's about to be broken for you and drink this wine that represents my blood that's about to be shed for you. Thomas, one who was with Jesus, even when he was arrested and though he fled like the others, Thomas did not accept the testimony and the evidence of his brothers. I can pause here parenthetically because on tomorrow, perhaps even on Tuesday, there in Minnesota, the jury that has heard the evidence that's been presented in the George Floyd murder trial. They too, my brothers and my sisters, are going to have to struggle from within to make the right verdict to not only deal with the injustice and the wrong that's been done, but to set a precedent to the injustices that are being done across our nation. Well, if the report of the disciples that Thomas was that Christ is risen, we've seen him. Thomas says that unless I can touch him, and unless I can put my fingers in his nail prints, and unless I can put, amen, my hand into his side, uh, Thomas is saying that, that I've got this struggle that I really don't know what to do with, but I rise to tell you today that for every struggle that Thomas had and every struggle that we have, Jesus offers a solution. This narrative, Thomas's struggle from within, though it's based on his failure to believe in what he had been told by his brother, was simply a failure of his faith. Hear me today. Thomas was struggling from a faith issue within. Thomas was not struggling with the absence of faith. He was not struggling with an abandonment of faith. But Thomas was struggling with what I call an abatement of his faith. That is, a lessening, a reduction of his faith to which his response to the disciples' testimony was simply, unless I see, I won't believe. That word, unless, that word, unless is simply a conjunction. It's, it's a word that means except, it means but, it means under the circumstances. While Thomas was struggling with his faith, his faith was not absent. Thomas did not say, I'm never going to believe. Thomas abandoned his, did not abandon his faith. He didn't say, well, you know, you're just saying what you thought you saw, and that's just the end of it. Thomas was saying that, yeah, I believe if I can see him for myself. My brothers and my sisters, every one of us get to a crossroads of life that, that where we don't have if you will, the absence of faith, the abandonment of faith, but an abatement of faith that we, like Thomas, need to see the existence of evidence of our in and of ourselves. But I am reminded, my brothers and my sisters, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Let me say that again. Hebrews 11 and 1 says that for every believer, it's crucial for us to equip ourselves as a foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ, that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And so for Thomas, for Thomas to say what he said to the disciples, unless I see his hands, I see the print of the nails, I put my Finger into the print of the nails and into his side, I will not believe. Thomas is saying that my struggle is with my faith. My brothers and my sisters, Thomas's response to the disciples' report and to his rejection was simply acknowledgement that he was decisive in what his faith believed. And every now and then we make responses and replies to things and to people about stuff that our faith believes. 
But I've told you before that faith is like a muscle. And the more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. And perhaps for Thomas and perhaps for all of us, if we, my brothers and my sisters, are going to deal with the struggles from within, we've got to learn how to exercise our faith. Well, after we discover that Thomas said that he will not believe you, John tells us in verse 26, Jesus, after eight days again, now comes and stands in their midst. Mind you, that nearly a week ago, that when Jesus had rose from the grave, that evening, if you read the earlier verses of John chapter 20, you will discover that Jesus comes and appears to the disciples. And as I shared with you all last week, it was a pivotal moment for them because they had went to the tomb earlier that morning and by evening Jesus shows up and shows himself to them. Here we are, eight days out. And although Thomas has received the testimony that has been verified and clarified by those who had seen Jesus, Thomas declared that he didn't believe that Jesus shows up and Jesus replies to Thomas's response. Isn't it interesting how the Lord has a way of showing up? In the words of Grandma and Granddaddy, he's an all time God. Look at what verse 27 says. Then he said to Thomas, that is Jesus, reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving but believing. Jesus, after eight days, appears to the disciples again. And Jesus has what I call a show and tell moment with the disciples. Y'all remember show and tell. Amen. Some of y'all who remember long enough who's mad can go back when you were going to school and on Fridays we could every now and then bring something to school and you show and tell. You could show it and you could talk about it. This was my so and so and this is what it does and this is why I like it and this is what it is. Jesus shows up to Thomas and says, Thomas, I'm going to give you a spiritual show and tell moment that you can exercise your faith and know that you need to move from where you are inwardly to where I want you to be. So Jesus says, reach your finger. Here, look at my hands. Reach your hand here. Put it in my side. Jesus says to him, don't be unbelieving, but be believing. Jesus is saying, I, I understand you're struggling, but your struggle in this situation is faith in me and who I am and what my father sent me to do. Don't struggle about this. You might be struggling, my brothers and my sisters, about some things in life, but you ought to never get to the point where you struggle with God's care for you, God's concern for you, God's love for you, God's power over you, God's protection over you, God's keeping over you, God's promises over you. You ought to never get to a point where you struggle Thomas simply replies, verse 28, my Lord, my God. Yes. Jesus goes on to say, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those 
who have not seen yet have believed. Those that join us in Bible study, we studying in the book of Ephesians and there in chapter 1 and verse 3, one of the word studies that we've done is the word blessed. That word we learned in the Greek is a word that is tied to blessed, blessed, and blessings and it is a Greek word that comes from the word eulogy, which means eulogy. It is a word to mean speak well of. It signifies to praise, to celebrate with praise. It is a word that addresses to God acknowledging his goodness with a desire for his glory. It is a word, my brothers and my sisters, that invokes blessings upon a person. And it is a word, my brothers and my sisters, that is especially used in the Gospel of Matthew. And it is a word that is used in the other Gospels. But it is a word, my brothers and my sisters, that not only bestows blessings upon us, but it is a word to cause to make us to feel happy or to be happy or to prosper in our lives. And what Jesus is saying is that if you really want to deal with your struggles inwardly, what you need to do first of all is you need to understand that your faith, your belief system needs to be based not on what you see, but what you hear and know about me. Well, if that's the case that Jesus says blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. What is this narrative actually telling us as we can apply it to our lives and the struggles that we have from within? The first thing that I think that the narrative suggests that our struggle like that of Thomas is really a head matter. Tell your neighbors a head matter. That is, it starts in our minds. It starts within our minds and it starts within our thinking. And that's why Paul, when he wrote to the church at Philippi in chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself no reputation and he took on the form of a servant uh, coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance of men. He humbled himself and became obedient uh, to the point of death, even to the death on the cross. Uh, Paul goes on to say in chapter 3 of Philippians verse 15 therefore let as many of us as mature have this mind and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. In other words, Paul is saying that this head now, this thing in our mind, uh, if we want to deal with the struggle within, we've got to start with our minds. Secondly, it is not only a head matter, but it's a heart matter. Say it's a heart matter. It's a hard matter because my brothers and my sisters, it's in the deep rooted part of our spirit, not that organ that's beating, amen, in our chest, uh, but the deep rooted spiritualness of God that connects us to the Father, connects us to the Son, and connects us to the Holy Spirit. The proverb writer put it like this, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. So if I'm struggling from within, what I need to do is to trust God with everything that I have. With everything that I know and with everything I think I need to do. And if I trust him with all my heart, all my mind, and with all my spirit, what I will discover is that God is going to show me what I need to see. God is going to put in front of me what I need to touch. God is going to allow my life to walk in the steps that he's ordered for my life. And that every path and every step I take in his name is moving me where God wants that I can be stronger and better inwardly than outwardly it will display. Yes, Amen. Well, it's a head matter and it's a heart matter. And I was reading and I remember in John in Mark chapter 9 
And this man brought his sick son to, to the disciples of Jesus and he asked them to heal him and they couldn't. And then Jesus comes along uh, and he says to Jesus, my son is sick and I asked your disciples to heal him and they couldn't uh, because they were struggling from within. Uh, and Jesus said to the man, uh, can you believe that all things are possible to him who believes? Uh, and the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Uh, but he also, if you read that in verse 24 of John of Mark's ninth chapter, he says, help my unbelief. In other words, he's saying, help me with the things that are hindering me to believe in you as I ought to believe in you. Help me with the things that are blocking me from my blessings that you want me to receive. Help me, my brothers and my sisters, by saying amen this morning. Help me, Holy Spirit, and allow me to be all that you call me to be. That wherever I am, I represent you and your kingdom and what
Amen. I struggle from within. It's a head now, a mind now. It's a heart now. More than anything, it's a hope matter. Put your hope, your trust, your everything in the Lord. Just as I've said before, while all others around us are losing everything, God has never lost a battle. He's able. The Bible says to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. God is able. How do you know he's able? He woke us up this morning. Started us on our way. Gave us another chance to live, to bring honor, to bring glory, to bring praise to him. Every struggle we bear, every struggle that those around us bear, every struggle that's in this nation, I believe that God can change it. Just by thinking about it. Amen. The Bible says he speaks. And it's done. He commands. Stand fast. I still believe in God. I believe that for every struggle I have, God has already provided a solution. You too, my brother. You too, my sister. Every struggle you bear today, every tear you're having to shed, every sorrow you're having to bear, God knows. God cares. God's able. Put your trust, put your hope in Him. Understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Thomas realized everything that had been said about Jesus, everything that he had seen Jesus do, and everything he had heard Jesus say. Jesus was indeed Son of the living God. I challenge you today who have not accepted him as the Son of the living God, as the Savior of the world, as the Redeemer of your soul. Just say with me, Lord, I repent. I confess my sins to you. I ask that you would forgive me, that you would save me, that you would redeem me. In Jesus' name, amen. You say that, if you do that, if you follow the other steps of the salvatory process, my brother and my sister, I believe you're saved. Find a Bible, teaching a Bible, preaching a Bible, living congregation, not a perfect church, but one who believes in the Lord and his word. Follow the salvatory steps, get baptized. What a difference God will make. And the struggles that you're dealing with within you, God will touch your head, he'll touch your heart, but most of all, he'll touch your hope. To know that as the word says, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has been revealed in the hearts of humanity the things that the Lord has in store for you. If you've been blessed today, God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you, our friends and our partners, and all of you who are members. We want you to know that we're praying you through this season. We're believing that God is going to allow us to get back together soon and very soon. And we want you to get vaccinated. We want you to follow the things that the CDC is saying. We want you to get in tune and in touch with God like you never before, like you have never before, and watch what God is getting ready to do in the earth. Watch what God is getting ready to do in humanity. And I believe that as we have embraced this year of divine shifting, God has shifted things. He's shifting them in the order and the way that he wants them to go. And what we have to do is stop struggling with him. Get on the Lord's side. If you've been blessed as a disciple, join us as a steward as we prepare now to give back to the Lord. Go to our website, www.rocklandbaptchurch.org. Select our gift tab. Give a generous gift back to the Lord. Because God has blessed you, you ought to be a blessing not only to the kingdom but to others. And if you join us, I promise you, your gifts will be used we do kingdom building as we try to embrace the lives of others. We pray that you've been blessed today. We pray that you'll join us again on next Sunday morning, the 9.35 hour for those on Zoom and to those that are joining us in worship by way of Facebook Live. Join us at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Until next Sunday, we'll see you again. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. Your struggle is soon to be over. Have a blessed week in the Lord. God bless you.